One of the most common problems that I hear from gardeners is that they struggle with pests in the garden. And when you grow a garden that gets overtaken by bad bugs, it can be really discouraging. But it happens to all of us at one point or another. But when the pest problem becomes such a big issue that you no longer enjoy your garden or can't get a successful harvest, you have to find a solution. And that's why in today's show, I'm going to be covering some really great tips for managing the pest problem, how to attract beneficial insects, and best gardening practices that will help keep your plants thriving without any issues. Hey there, I'm Audrey Crawford, and I am a California gardener in Zone 9. I teach you the tried and true methods of gardening in our climate and break down complicated gardening advice into simple and actionable steps so that you can grow your best garden yet. This is the Audrey's Little Farm Show. So to start off today's show, I want to talk about many tips for implementing into the garden. And the very first one is probably the opposite of what you're thinking, and that is to not spray the bad bugs. You probably have heard this over the years from various gardeners, but it's true. When you kill the bad bugs, you're also killing the good bugs. So when you spray an insecticide to kill something such as aphids, you're also killing the bugs that would eat the aphids. And according to the USDA, less than 1% of insect species are considered harmful. Insects prey on harmful pests, they pollinate plants, they decompose organic matter, and they produce valuable products for us like honey. And so all in all, the majority of insects are actually really beneficial and we need them in the garden. But the problem happens when the population of bad bugs gets larger than the population of good bugs. And unfortunately, if you spray or kill the problem insects, such as aphids, you've been killing off all the good bugs and you need to build back up your population of beneficials. So back in May of 2022, that was when my first son was born or first and only son. And prior to that, obviously, I spent a lot more time out in the garden. And as soon as I would notice any sort of bug issue, I was the type of gardener that was the, would jump right on spraying it with some organic insecticidal soap, things like that, because I thought that was the best option. I thought if I could spray the bugs as soon as I saw them, that that would actually keep my pest problem under control. I knew about this whole theory of not spraying because it would kill the good bugs too, except for I thought if I didn't see the good bugs, that um, that really wasn't an issue. But unfortunately, it was an issue, and I really struggled with pests in the garden for a long time. But then in May of 22, my son was born, and in those next couple of years, I really didn't spend as much time in the garden, and one of the things that got pushed on the back burner was spraying the bugs. And what happened in those two years is that my pest problem got significantly better. So I have two very distinct years of not spraying in my garden, and that was the spring garden of 22 and the spring garden of 23, and I literally had no pest problems. I planted beneficial flowers all throughout my garden to attract in beneficials, and I sprayed my plants with things such as MicroLife seaweed spray, which enhances the growth and keeps your plants healthier. It's also said to uh, um, prevent things like spider mites, and all in all, with a combination of those things, I hardly had any pest problems. Most years, I end up ripping out my cucumbers mid-season because they're infested with aphids, but the last couple of years, that didn't happen. I had cucumbers all summer long. I had no spider mites on my tomatoes. My squash plants were not covered in squash bugs. And the only thing that I changed in my gardening routine was that I quit spraying. And so I just wanted to share that story because it is a real life example of what I have done in my garden and it has really worked. So the thing is, you have to know which bugs are good and which bugs are bad. And sometimes you might think you have an infestation of bad bugs when really they're actually good bugs. So the next tip that I recommend is learning how to identify the bugs. So I know this can be difficult because some bugs are actually kind of hard to identify. For example, most of us probably recognize the mature ladybug, but have you ever seen ladybug larvae? They almost look like tiny alligators. They're long black with a sort of spiky looking skin and they ha usually have orange or yellow spots. And the larva stage is actually the most beneficial. They continuously feed on aphids and other soft-bodied insects until they're ready to pupate. In fact, the larva of many beneficial insects is usually the most beneficial stage, but it's usually the stage that people don't recognize. So if you see these weird looking 
bugs that are in the larva stage and you're not sure what they are and you get rid of them, you're probably harming a really beneficial insect that could really benefit you out in the garden. So let's cover some of the common beneficial insects that you do want in your garden. And we'll start off with some that are really good aphid predators. One of the best is the green lacewing. They devour aphids and then they move on to other pest insects. The green lacewing embeds in aphid colonies by laying their eggs there, and then once the eggs hatch, the larvae eat the adult aphids. Another good aphid predator is the ladybug, which we mentioned earlier, and the parasitic wasp. Some other good guys to have around your garden include the praying mantis, assassin bugs, which I hope the, the name implies, ground beetles, and be, uh, beneficial nematodes. And so, I know there's a lot more beneficials out there, but those are just a few of the most common. And I recommend uh, learning how to identify those guys. Look them up on the internet or a book. Learn what they look like at all the different stages from their eggs to their larva to the adult insect itself. Just start learning how to identify them. And now let's talk about the harmful insects. I know there is way more than what I'm going to list, but here are some of the most common. Aphids, cutworms, flea beetles, fungus gnats, grubs, root aphids, slugs and snails, squash bugs, spider mites, thrips, and whiteflies. So luckily, if you have any of the beneficial insects in your garden, they're going to help you keep down these populations of the bad guys. But one of the issues with these harmful insects is that they overwinter in your soil and so if you have a really bad pest problem one season, and then they overwinter in the soil over the winter, and then come springtime again, all these bugs come back out. And it's just this vicious cycle of bad bugs from one season to the next. And you may have heard of gardeners purchasing beneficial insects and letting them loose in their garden. And this is definitely not a bad idea, but in many cases, those insects that you buy end up leaving your garden because they're not native and they can just actually fly away. You know, there's nothing keeping them in the garden. And so the very best thing that you can do is um, try to attract the beneficial insects into your garden. Don't necessarily buy beneficial insects, but do your best to naturally attract the beneficial insects. And so we're going to talk about how to do that in just a minute because it's one of my most favorite topics. And I believe it's one of the things that has helped my garden be so manageable is that I do a lot of things that attract the beneficial insects. But first I wanted to mention some beneficial insects that may be worth investing in. And those are beneficial nematodes. You can apply beneficial nematodes to your soil to kill all of the overwintered bugs and kill any other soil dwelling pests. They are, um, there's actually even quite a few reputable stores online that you can order from. And so you can purchase these beneficial nematodes and you can put them on your soil before the gardening season. And those nematodes work in the soil and they help get rid of those bad populations of bugs. And so if you've had a really bad infestation of insects like grubs, cabbage loopers, cutworms, flea beetles, or anything else that can overwinter in the soil, then I would really recommend looking into getting some beneficial nematodes and putting it out in your garden this year. It may be the trick that really helps get your uh, pest problem under control. And the reason it works a lot better than purchasing other beneficial insects is that the nematodes live in the soil. So it's not like they can fly away, they're in the soil. And so um, it's really, it could be a really good investment and they're not really too expensive either. But sometimes the best way to identify pest problems is to actually just get help from other gardeners. And if you would like to join my membership, it is an amazing community that can help. We have over 200 members and I am constantly in there to answer each and every question. Plus you'll get access to monthly growing calendars for zone nine, monthly garden tours and teachings, plus an entire resource library full of gardening courses and guides. The link will be in the show notes. And if you would like to join now, you can actually get a 14 day free trial just to make sure that it's the right fit for you. And now let's talk about how to attract beneficial insects. So one of the best things you can do as a vegetable gardener is to plant a variety of flowers and herbs amongst your fruits and vegetables that will bring in beneficial insects, whether it's for getting rid of the bad bugs or just for helping pollination. So there are so many flowers and herbs that attract beneficial insects and that will feed on the bad bugs. And, but if you don't purposefully try to attract them into the garden, it's likely that they're not going to show up. You may get a few beneficials here and there, 
But vegetable plants really aren't that attractive to beneficial insects. Of course, when the vegetables flower, you're going to see the bees pollinating the various flowers, but the rest of the plant really isn't that attractive to those beneficial insects. And so you need to do or plant plants that bring those guys in. And there isn't really much scientific evidence on deterring bugs with beneficial plants. You know, there's a lot of talk out there about planting marigolds to deter pests. And I've actually been one of the gardeners that has promoted that in the past. But the more research I do, um, I actually find that it may not work as well as it says it does. Um, I've never had bad results with the marigolds, and I thought that they really helped with my pest problem. But I think it may be more of all the other best practices that I've implemented, not so much the marigolds. However, bringing in flowering plants is very beneficial. So it's not so much about planting something that has a really strong scent that's going to deter any bug. It's about bringing in a beneficial plant that will bring in the beneficial insects to then eat the harmful guys. So a really wonderful flower that you can add to your garden is Phacelia. I will link to it in the show notes below, but it's such a wonderful plant for attracting bees, which will help pollinate. So if you've ever had bad pollination with your squashes or cucumbers, this can be a really great plant that will help you bring in those pollinators. It's also really great for attracting hoverflies, which will feed on aphids and other problem insects. Another flower I love to have around my garden is sweet alyssum. It is so easy to grow and it lasts all year long, um, at least in mild climates. I planted my sweet alyssum last spring and it survived all winter long and now we're approaching this spring and it's regrowing all of its beautiful flowers. It's, it's great for attracting ladybugs, lacewings, parasitic wasps, and lots of other great beneficials. And it's pretty low growing and it has pretty white flowers. There's also purple varieties. So that is a great one to add to your garden. And so simply just having more flowering plants around your garden and um, your vegetable plants and your fruits is going to help attract more beneficials. You can also leave some of your bolted crops out in the garden, as long as you have room, of course. So your bolted radishes, cilantro, lettuce, or broccoli, all of those and um, once they bolt and head to seed are great ways to also attract beneficial insects into your garden. And now one of the next tips as a gardener for managing pests in your garden is to overall just keep your plants healthy because stressed out plants are the plants that attract the bad bugs. It's sort of like in nature, if an animal is sick, that's the animal that predators are going to going to go after because they know that they have an easy chance of killing that animal because it's stressed or it's hurt, whatever the issue might be. So when plants are stressed or not that healthy, those are going to be the ones that the pests want to attack. And so one of the first things you need to do is make sure you're on a good watering schedule. Um, you don't want to overwater, of course, because that could be a waste. And sometimes too much water actually causes just as much harm as it does um, not watering. So get your plants on a good watering schedule where they grow deep, healthy roots and where the ground is staying consistently moist and not completely drying out, but where you're not just overly saturating your plants. And then you want to make sure you take care of the weeds. So, um, weeds always, you know, they're one of the gardener's other huge problems, but you don't want your plants stressed out and competing for space. And if you have weeds throughout your entire garden bed and those weeds are competing with your vegetables, your vegetables are going to be a little bit stressed out. So keeping your garden weed free is another really good way to get rid of pe uh, harmful pests in the garden. But of course, there is actually some weeds that are that flower and bring in some pollinators. So sometimes weeds can actually act as a beneficial thing. But for the most part, you're going to be better off if you keep your garden weed free. The next tip is to harvest your plants often. So harvesting often is just a good practice. First of all, so you can make use of the produce, but Harvesting often keeps your plants more productive and it makes them produce more fruits. So they'll flower more often and produce more. So you don't want to just leave things out on the vine or after so long, the plants kind of just think that their season is over and they're going to be less productive. And then be sure to always space your plants at the recommended spacing. The more crowded your garden is, there's less airflow, which creates more disease and more pest problems. So you want to make sure you always have things spaced at the proper spacing and then you can interplant with things like the flowers and herbs, but you don't want to overcrowd things like your tomatoes and your peppers and your squashes, because that's just going to make those plants grow um, a little less productive. You know, they're not going to get quite as big. They're going to be 
a little less healthy and so it's not worth cramming two plants into an area where it should really only have one. And another great way to plant your garden is to grow vertically and that will really help with a pest problem because it gets your plants up off the ground which is really beneficial. It creates more airflow which is beneficial and it allows you to actually see the pest more easily when you're walking out through the garden. If the plants are growing vertically you can actually spot the pest problem a lot quicker and kind of treat as necessary. And I know I mentioned I don't spray insecticides, but I do spray off pests when I see them with the water hose. So if the plants are growing vertically, it's just really easy to go out there with the hose and spray off aphids, for example. And then prune your plants if necessary. So a lot of gardeners prune their tomatoes and their cucumbers, and you don't have to really be excessive with this. In fact, you don't want to really prune too much, but it is good to do a little bit of pruning just to open up the plant a little bit to give it some airflow. And really this is for, you know, to help the plant grow a little bit more healthy, but to create a little bit of airflow. And so there's less of a pest problem. Um, like I mentioned, you know, really dense foliage and overcrowded plants are just a great atmosphere for bad bugs. And then you want to keep your garden area cleaned up and keep old fruit cleaned up. So if your tomato plant drops a bunch of tomatoes on the ground, for example, this is really common with cherry tomatoes, don't just leave them on the ground. That is when a lot of pests are going to come in, especially things like ants. It's going to, They're going to come in and eat all that old fallen off fruit. And so if you keep all that old fruit picked up, whether it be off your fruit trees, tomato plants, um, even zucchini and cucumbers and things like that that can you know get too large and start to rot on the plant you want to make sure you clean those things up and especially after the end of your gardening season you want to make sure you go through and clean up all your old plant debris so that it's not a great home for all those um, bad bugs to overwinter in so a cleaned up garden is another great way to keep um, the bad bugs population down and then Another thing you can do is replant multiple times throughout the season. So if you're a gardener in zone nine as well, we don't have just one planting date in spring. We have our first planting date, but then we can continue planting all of spring, all throughout summer, and for a lot of crops, even into late summer. So if you have a plant for some reason that just is totally infested with aphids, rip it out and get rid of it, discard the plant material, and then replant that plant. We can grow multiple times. So I recommend succession planting with almost all of your crops. So every few weeks plant new crops as long as you have the space. So you could do multiple crops of bush green beans, a couple crops of tomatoes, various crops of squashes and cucumbers just to keep younger, healthier plants in the garden. And then if you have issues with the older plants, you can just rip them out because you already have those younger, healthier plants coming up. The next thing you could do to manage pests in the garden is to physically remove them. So if you go out to the garden and you actually see the bugs, you can just pick them off with your fingers and get rid of them. Um, you could spray them off with a water hose. I typically do this um, pretty frequently throughout the season. I will go out to my garden usually every morning or every other day and I check on all of my plants. I look on the undersides of the leaves and I just make sure I look to make sure I don't see anything. Sometimes the pest problem is really easy to keep under control if you just catch it soon. If you wait until your plants are totally covered in aphids, for example, then they're a lot harder to get rid of. But if you notice them right away and spray them off with a water hose, it's really easy to keep the problem in check. Another thing you can do is vacuum up the bugs. So this would be really great for something like a squash bug that's larger. And usually there's quite a few all in one area, usually at the base of your plants. And so if you could just take the shop vac or something or even a hand vacuum that would be battery powered, that would be really helpful. And just take that out to the garden and vacuum them up. And it would be a really easy way to get rid of a lot of them all at once. So as we wrap up, just remember that growing a pest-free garden is not something that happens overnight. It is a process of us implementing all of these best practices. And then over time, we are going to see much better results. So we need to stop using insecticides Learn to identify the good and the bad bugs at all stages, the eggs, the larvae, and the adults, and then start attracting beneficials. So that can happen by planting all of the beneficial flowers and herbs throughout your garden beds. And then overall, just keep your garden healthy. You know, keep your uh, garden beds weeded, water everything well, uh, keep your plants healthy, remove old dead debris, 
um, clean up your garden at the end of the season, all of the things that just help overall create a much healthier garden area. And in time, the pest problem will decrease. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Audrey's Little Farm Show. I would be so appreciative if you would rate and subscribe to the podcast so that other gardeners can learn about this show. And I would also love for you to join our membership. It is such a great place to connect with other gardeners and get tailored advice for you and your specific garden. So be sure to just head to the show notes below for all of the details, and I will see you in the next episode.